from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Robert Taylor and Denise Darcell in Westward the Women. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. It's sometimes nice to look back to the trails blazed by our ancestors and take heart from their courage. In tonight's play, I think you'll be fascinated by the unusual situation of one man bossing a wagon train of a hundred women intended as wives of the California settlers. And as our stars of this intriguing metro goldwyn Mayer picture, we have Robert Taylor and Denise Darcell playing their original roles in Westwood, The Women. Starring Robert Taylor as Buck Wyatt and Denise Darcell as Denard. <music> California, a hundred years ago. A settlement called Whitman's Valley. It's early morning, but the saloons are open. And Roy Whitman knows where to find the man he's looking for. They tell me you just came up from San Diego, bud. Yeah. Sit down, Roy. Hey. Brought a party all the way there from Missouri, huh? I'm going to get drunk for a week trying to forget about it. You got plans for the week after? No. Nope. Then I got a job for you, if you're interested. Well, I don't run cattle and don't grow wheat. And... You ever really look at this valley? Wheat and cattle and horses and ranches. And the men who own them? Well, now they know that what I told them about this valley was true. You want me to pat you on the back? No, not yet. <laughs> you see, in all my planning, I forgot one thing. Women good women to be wives and mothers to make this valley a place that'll last forever what's that got to do with me the men want wives they put up the money to get them here they're just as sick of this as i am saloons gambling well you know yeah i know and i like it i want you to go to chicago with me buck i'll recruit the women you'll guide us back across the country <laughs> oh no i won't how much pay did you get to bring those folks to san diego plenty whatever it was i'll pay a thousand more well you're really crazy, aren't you? Maybe. All right, you got a deal. How many good women do you figure on bringing here? Well, there's a hundred men put up the money. You better recruit 150 women, then. If we're real lucky, you'll only lose one out of three. Well, I'm kind of anxious to get started, Buck. Uh, you still figure to stay drunk for a week? You start looking for me day after tomorrow. I'll be real mean, but I'll be ready. <laughs> So, we're on our way to Chicago, me and Buck Wyatt, and we'll bring the women back. <laughs> now, now, just remember, I don't guarantee the looks, but this much I promise. They'll be good women, and they'll be your fortune. And God help you if you don't treat them right, because you'll answer to me. All right, Buck, let's get started. <laughs> Yeah, fine men, but fine men. Get one thing straight, Roy. Whether you get your good women or not, I get my money. That's right. You really think these fine men will marry those good women if they ever get here? Yes. They're crazy, too. Sure. Crazy enough to build a home out of the wilderness. That kind of crazy I like. All right, ladies. Ladies, please. We've been months getting here to Chicago, Mr. Wyatt and I. And if necessary, we'll spend months picking out those of you we want to take back. So just simmer down and fill out those application papers. We'll meet you upstairs in the hall at one o'clock. That's it for now, ladies. And thank you. Well, all right. We'll fill out those application papers upstairs. We're wasting our time, Sherry. Why? Why? Didn't you see the look he gave us? The way we're dressed, that's why. But we had no time. We'd come straight to the theater. And we'll go back to the theater. Oh, Laurie, no, no. We go to the boarding house. We change our clothes. We fix our hair. We take the rouge off our faces. And we come back like two little angels. You think Mr. Whitman won't recognize us? We won't even recognize ourselves. Oh, it won't work, Dan on. Then we lost nothing. Oh, Laurie, please. It's a chance for a whole new life. For that, I will try anything. Me too, honey. Come on, we'll have to hurry. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, next application. Miss uh, Rose Myers, please. Yes, sir. Uh, you're a school teacher? Yes, sir. Good. I'll need someone like you to keep a journal of our trip. Go to the desk, sign your name, please. Uh, Patience Hawley. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts, huh? That's my home port, Captain, but I figured it was time to scrape my hull and weigh anchor. Uh. Uh, you've uh, stated your age on your application, but looking at you... Smoke I... no come. You can't ask a woman to state her age right, but I can ship my tonnage and extra to boot. <sighs> yes, ma'am, I would say that you could. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead and sign on. Thank you. Well, that should do it, Buck. How many all told? 138. And I'd just soon we get started. Mr. Whitman, please. Uh, well? I am Mademoiselle Fifi Danon, and this is Miss Smith, my friend. Look, girls, go home, huh? Oh, I'm sorry we are a little late, but it was very necessary. Uh, why do you want to go to California? Well, uh, we... He said, why California? We want a change, monsieur. Of what? Of scenery. Would it be a permanent change? Oui, monsieur, a permanent change. Well, your applications look all right to me. Sign the book, ladies. Oh, thank, oh, you. Merci, thank you, Monsieur. Mr. Merci. You got any idea what you're doing? Oh, they'll be all right, Buck. They'll do fine. I'm sure a train. Well, you ready to talk to him? I'm ready, and I got plenty to say. Now listen close. We go from here by boat, St. Louis, then to Independence. We jump off from Independence, cross the Big Blue River, the Little Blue, the Platte, and the Sweetwater. We take the South Pass over the Rockies down to the Big Salt Lake, then over the desert. It's a long, hard grind with no let-up. Rain, hail as big as eggs, breakdowns, prairie fires, sandstorms, dust storms, alkali water, no water. There'll be cholera, Indians, drownings, stampedes, and stupid accidents. We'll pass old graves and leave new ones everywhere along the way. So if you're smart, you'll get up now and leave and forget all about California. That's my best advice. Follow it. Nobody wants to quit, huh? All good, brave women, huh? Well, you've made Mr. Whitman real happy. Now, can any of you handle a horse? I can. I don't mean just ride. I mean handle. Seven of you? Eight? Eight. All right, give your names to Mr. Whitman. Can any of you handle mules? A team of mean, iron-mouthed mules. Four courageous ladies. You'll be a big help, I'm sure. Now, what about firearms? Any of you shoot a gun? I mean, shoot it and hit what you're aiming at. Gene can, and so can I. All right, here's my gun. Catch. I caught it, mister. This is a three-foot map of Whitman's Valley. Let's see you hit it. What's that in the middle of it, Mr. Wyatt? That's the Adams Ranch on the left and the Warren Ranch on the right. Gene will shoot first, mister. Mr. Whitman, would you care to join me on the floor? <clears throat> when you're ready, ladies. We're ready. Your turn, Maggie. Holy Moses. Well, look, Buck, look. Ladies, it appears you're blowing two ranches right out of Whitman's Valley. Is that what you meant us to do? That's just what I meant. You're a real comfort to me. Now about those frilly, fluffy clothes you're wearing. Get clothes and boots that are rough, tough, and comfortable. Wouldn't hurt any of you to wear pants. I mean, pants. Pants. And speaking of pants, I got men waiting for us at Independence. Fifteen men to help me get you through to California. Just one thing about those men. Stay away from them. Don't ever forget that. All right, Mr. Whitman, they're all yours. Well, Rose, still taking care of a journal, huh? Good girl. Seven full pages, Mr. Whitman. The boat trip to St. Louis, then here to Independence. Now a fresh page for our real start. Good, good. Ah, uh, just write in the book that I've taken great heart with the conduct of the women. The way they're all learning to shoot, to handle the wagon, drive the mule. We can't wait to get started, Mr. Whitman. And Mr. Wyatt's terribly upset. He wanted to leave at daybreak. Well, upset or not, Mr. Wyatt's going to wait a mite longer. Get all the women together, Rose. We're going to kneel on this Missouri ground and pray. Well, Buck, 
We're on our way. Yeah. Get ready to run for your life. Uh, you don't think they've learned how to drive? I think they have, but let's find out. Stretch out. Stretch your wagon. <laughs> you see, Buck, all these weeks of preparation, you've missed one thing. Have I? The will of a woman when there's a wedding ring in sight. <laughs> Maybe so. You better get forward, Roy. I'll hang back and watch for the stragglers. All right, Rose. Who is he? He's been riding off our bow all day. He, he seems very nice, Patience. His name is Sidney. Sidney Cutler. Now, you listen to me, Rose. On this voyage, there's going to be no heen and sheen. Oh, I know. I know. Well, then you better let him know, because he's taken an interest or hadn't you noticed. Yeah. Patience, you've been married, haven't you? I... My man's dead. Him and my three boys with him. They all went down together off Cape Horn. Took the biggest storm in 50 years to sink my man. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, child. That's all right. You mules, mind your course there. Heave a port. Heave! Scrubbing, washing, splashing all over. Don't they know we're in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> you don't know women. Me? I don't know women? <laughs> What's so funny? All the time, boss. You make me laugh. Get in the cook wagon. See that we get some decent grub for supper. Yes, sir, boss. Very good. All the time, very good grub. I think. Uh, wait a minute. I got another job for you. What, boss? Browse around and see if you can find the grave of a Jim Quackenbush. Jim Quackenbush? You heard me. Jim Quackenbush. Very good. I ask. Hey, Danon. Yes? Get some of these women to look for clover. What's for? Cut off the tops and cook them up. That's what the Indians do, and they don't get scurvy. Glory, Jim. Come and help me. We eat clover for supper. Listen, Danon. Why must sad music be so beautiful? That's Rose playing that song. Last night she played the same song, too. She said it is from her home, some little farm village. What's she got to be so sad about, Lori? Uh, I don't know. Maybe she's in love. That Sydney Cutler, you Oh, come on. Let's get this thing. Hey, Ito. Yes, sir, boss. Well? No, Jim Quacky Bush, boss. Boss. Why are you looking for grave? Well, because me and Jim, we've been pals for years. I couldn't live without him. But uh, if you die, you got to live without him. <laughs> no, I don't. Please. Is boss all right in the head? Boss all right in the head. Now go to sleep. Wait a minute. You see something, boss? Yeah, a second wagon there on the far side. That's a uh, woman's wagon, boss. That is woman there. Yeah, sure. Only a man's with her. Boss, no. No gun. You stay where you are and shut up. But you can't come here. You know what they... If you just keep quiet, who's going to know? No. No, I won't let and you. That's not what you said when you talked. Someone's to... coming. It's Wyatt. Pull a gun, Riley, and I'll kill you. Uh, but, uh, look, I, I know I broke orders, but all I was get doing... Get on your horse and get out. Oh, I'll not take it easy. It's a long ways back. Nobody can make it alone. You can try. You're making a mistake, Buck. You're right, Cat. I should kill him. Oh, we need every man we got. This kind of fun will rip a train wide open. On most trains, the law calls for 30 lashes. On my train, from here on, it's a bullet. Now, use your heads and stay alive. Get going, Riley. All right, ladies, settle down. We got to get up with the birdies. There is not much you miss, is there, Mr. White? I thought you'd be in on this, Danon. Me? You. Don't you ever shave. Go to sleep. You always look so dirty. Sherry, look. Don't you go getting ideas. It is not me that get ideas. It is that ideas get me. Oh, you sure forget easy, don't you? Huh? All that big talk. We go to California. It's a new country, a new life. That is what I said. That is what I mean. But I did. It did get me. Buck. Buck, wake up. Hmm? Oh, 
Hello, Roy. I just got back to camp, Travers and me. You find water? I found Indians. I crossed the river, 40, 50 of them, heading this way. They see you? I don't know. I, I'll rouse the women. You'll say nothing to any of them. It's three hours till daylight. Let them rest. They'll be hysterical soon enough. Well, they'll be dead soon enough. On the you... trail, I'm boss. Or did you forget? Sorry. The rush is at daybreak. We'll be ready for them. Now give me a hand and we'll round up the stock. We'll continue with this week's production of the Hollywood Radio Theater in just a moment. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has, like Fiorello LaGuardia, the busy little mayor of New York who found time to get on the radio and read funnies to the kids. There was a man who loved children and through his love saw the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund come into being. To start such a fund, LaGuardia went to Europe, not as a representative of the UN, but as an American citizen. He traveled from country to country, investigating conditions, speaking to the people, and making friends. In his native land, Italy, he helped hand out food to the needy and won their admiration. On his return to the United States, LaGuardia worked day and night to sell the need for a children's emergency fund. And finally, the General Assembly of the UN adopted his proposal unanimously in a resolution which stated that as many children as possible to the age of 18 would receive help from the fund on the basis of need without discrimination because of race, creed, nationality, or political belief. Workers all over America donated a day's pay to the fund, as did children in all kinds of schools, organizations, and churches. But LaGuardia didn't live to see the full success of the great work he helped to start. His big heart stopped the night before the UN announced aid allocation to over 3,700,000 children and mothers in 12 European countries and China. But others picked up where Fiorello LaGuardia left off, people like him, who knew that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Westwood, The Women, starring Robert Taylor as Buck and Denise Dossel as Danan. the following morning, but the Indian attack has failed to materialize. Too many wagons, too many rifles. For the time being, the wagon train is safe. And by way of celebration, Roy Whitman persuaded Buck to call a day's holiday. I thought you asked me for a day of rest. Oh, let them dance, Buck, if they have a mind for it. And keep their spirits up. Um, well, what about the men joining? The men are where they belong, out scouting you figure the Indians will be back? How do I know what they'll do? Well, uh, no hard feelings, or I'm just uneasy, I guess. You'll feel better when we're moving again. Yeah, sure. No, no, don't shoot it, just me. Oh, Dan on, huh? Why can't you call me Miss Dano, like you call all the others? Is that what you came up here to ask? If I'm still Dano and we get to California, California wouldn't be any different for me than Chicago. <laughs> Don't worry, not all the men in California want to get married. You, for instance? Me, for instance. That's a good perfume you use. The best. Does it bother you, Buck? Get back to your wagon. That rule goes for you and me, too. I told Roy Whitman back in California... Oh, now you tell me the story of your life. Let me tell you mine. It's much more interesting. (laughs) I know yours. Now, go back where you belong. Boss, it's me, Ito. I look for grave, boss. No, Jim Quackebush. Keep looking. Uh, Boss, men come back now. They say no more Indian. Good. Nice perfume, huh, boss? Very pretty lady. Why, you little... It's all right, boss. I go, I go. But, Rose, it don't make sense, child. If you're sick, why shouldn't you? No, tell the... there's nothing anyone can do. Please, patient. Rose, you don't mean you're... Spoken oakum. Who else knows about this? Nobody here. Back home, they all know. That's why I'm going west, patient. A baby. I've done wrong. I've suffered for it. I don't want my baby to. 
Oh, Barry will have a chance. Oh, now, don't you worry, Rose. He won't run aground. You won't tell. Promise me you won't. Oh, they'll know soon enough without me telling them. It'll be months yet. Ah, uh, sure, honey, sure. Now, you lie down and let me cover you. All right, boys, we'll stand two hour watches during the night, same as usual. Keep the fire going here by the corral, but don't let any of the... Where's Cat? I said, where's Cat? Uh, I don't know, Buck. Like they somewhere's around. I thought he was with you. Well, yeah, he, he was. Maybe he went to the cook wagon for coffee or something. <laughs> you and Dan on, huh, Cat? You kill her? Kill her? What's the matter, you crazy? All I did was just rough her up a Looks little. like she just fainted, Buck. She'll be all right. Sure, I didn't do nothing. You were with her. All right, I was with her, Buck. Now, is that such a... You remember what I told you? Boys don't like the rules you make, Buck. I'll take care of them later. Now, Buck, you're going to give me a chance to draw, ain't you? Buck, you wouldn't just... Go ahead, draw. Maggie, get Laurie Smith and take care of Dan on. Buck? I'm all right. It's going to be awful tough getting to your valley, Roy. So make up your mindset. Why was Buck to see you riding next to Rose here? He'd shoot you down the same as he did Cat. Yeah, maybe so. Why, it's gone crazy. He'd kill any one of us next. When are you leaving? Tonight. So make up your mind. Rose, come with me. We'll make it back, all right? No. No, I can't. I'll take care of you, Rose. Honest, I will. I can't. Look, if it's that, Rose, I, I know. Patience told me. And you still want me? Listen to me, honey. If there was time, I wouldn't be talking like this. But there isn't any time. I love you, Rose. I... I want to marry you. Come back with me and we'll... I can't. I can't. You think it's wrong to leave the others? Is that it? Yes. I've done enough wrong for a whole lifetime. Hey, you coming or not? I... I'm not leaving Rose. Suit yourself. And good luck. <laughs> Buck, wait, wait, Roy. Well, the men are gone, and eight of the women with them. Must have waited till we rode out to scout. When I got back to camp, they were gone. Only two of them left: Sid Cutler and the Japanese cook. Well, well, we we turn back. We do. We come nearly halfway. Thank God, it's the easy half we'll face going back. We're not going back. My job is taking trains through. If you lose a train, nobody ever hires you again. I've seen it happen too many times. Well, it's not going to happen to me. I don't care what happens to you. So's women. You can't get them through. It can't be done with women alone. Then I'll make men out of your women, Roy. You breed cattle in that valley of yours, you kill off the weak ones. By the time we get to that valley, you'll know that the women who are left are fit stock. Now get back to camp and rouse them out. By the time they get their big blue eyes open, I'll be there to talk to them. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. It seems that during the night, the men left. And with them went eight very wise ladies. Now, as I to give you time to think, you might feel sorry for yourselves. You might get a little envious of those eight very wise women. So I'm going to drive you till you're too tired to think. You're going to start by fixing breakfast. It'll be daylight by the time you're through eating, and I'll be waiting for you. You're going to learn to shoot. You're going to learn to ride. You're going to learn how to handle your wagon. That goes for you, too, Danon, so get that dumb cow look off your face. Now start moving, the lot of you. Cup of coffee, Roy? Huh? Oh, yeah. Bring the coffee, Ito. Give me the suru, Wakuru. What'd you say? I say in Japanese, boss. All you do is make them hate you. Well, you can say it in English, because I hope they do. <laughs> Whitman, Feel any better, Rose? Who says anything's wrong with Rose? I'm fine, Mr. Whitman. Just kind of tired, I guess. Uh, well, 
I want it put in the journal rules. Just write it down how the men deserted and how we're going to push ahead just the same. And uh, you can say that this afternoon we faced a new disaster. This afternoon? But it's still morning. Uh, Mr. Wyatt and I have been riding ahead. Been a landslide. Oh. Boulders as big as this wagon. They cover the trail for 200 yards. And what's he got to say about it, Mr. Wyatt? He says we'll have to roll those boulders and clear the trail. Then I guess we're gonna. Come on, you mules. Eee! Stop wasting your breath cheering about it. That's just one of these boulders. Now, come on, get to it. What's the matter, Dan, on that rock too heavy for you? I do the best I can. Why don't you do better than the best you can? Me all the time, it's toujours après moi. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire, Take it comme... easy, Sherry. Don't let him get you all upset. Oh, keep yourself shut up. Come on, ladies, get behind that rock. Oh, you shut up, too. I'll shut up when the trail's clear. Now, please, I've got more news for you, ladies. You did pretty well clearing that trail yesterday, but there's a hill ahead of us. Only it's much too steep to drive wagons down. So if you want to get to California, the wagons will have to be eased down the hill, lowered down. That means block and tackle and ropes and every ounce of strength you can muster. Eat a good lunch, ladies. Any mistakes this afternoon, it may be your last. Hold those mules back. You're going down too fast. I'm going up. Oh, no. Hang on there, Jesse. We'll get you down. Hold back on that rope. It's getting away from us. Put on your wheel brake. Your wheel brake. Look, look. The axle's turned loose. The axle's broken. Let go of the rope. Let go of it. Buck. It's no use, Roy. But get to him if you can. Who was in that wagon? Mary Saunders, Jesse Toller. All right. Get the next wagon up here. Sid, Nito, get that other block and tackle. I said, who's next? Come on, it's been done before. The only difference was it was done by men. By men, huh? All right, I'll take the next wagon down. Easy there, mules. Mind your helm. Hold them back. You're giving them too much head. Just get these bullies on the prod. I can handle them. All right, ladies, get on that rope and pay it out easy. Set your brakes, patient. Set your own brakes, mister, and turn me loose. Tackle set. All right, start it down. Turn me loose up there. I made it. I made it. <laughs> you weren't so big, I'd kiss you. If you weren't so puny, I'd let you. Hey, how'd you get down here? Horseback. I wasn't pulling any wagon. All right up there. Who's next? July 24th, 1851. Our journey has been halted now for two days. We have buried our dead. Mary Saunders, Jesse Toller, and the two Abbott sisters. But we have conquered the trail. Many of the women are sick with fever, but Mr. Wyatt says we must go on. God grant they be spared. Better get in the wagon, Sherry. They're rounding up the mules. They'll be hitching in a minute. But look, Lori, look over there. Oh, it's just a rabbit. We got my spice bag when I get the raffle. For supper tonight, we shall eat rabbit a la dano. Oh, just be careful. I don't trust you with a rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run them in there, Sid. The wagon circle. Yeah. Keep them coming, Roy. Get those mules in here. Yeah. Who fired that rifle? <laughs> Hey, you lot of big critters, turn him away! Stampede! Turn him! Stampede! Turn him back! Buck, 
How is he, Mr. Whitman? How do you think he is? Tromped on by a herd of stampeding mules. Oh, he'll live, but he can't thank you for it. You see what you started? It wasn't her fault. It could have happened. What do you mean it wasn't her fault? Who fired that gun? Mules are crazy, but there isn't one on the train you couldn't learn from. Oh, taisez-vous donc. Vous n'avez pas fait exprès quand même. Don't talk to me in that lingo. I don't know what you're yapping about, and I don't want to know. Oh, vous êtes un bécile, une tête de mule insupportable. Shut up. Roy was out of his mind to sign you on. From now on, stick to that wagon, both of you. Don't move from it. Everything you touch is that much more grief. Sal cush. Don't sal cush on me. Give me a mari murida. I don't want to hit the yard. You too, huh? All right, what did you say? I say you're wrong, boss. Too much, boss. This ready she do. Two, three times more work than everybody. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Even if I am. When you're wrong, boss, I tell you. Even if you are. And this time, Laurie, you don't stop me. No one stopped me. Not you, not him, not anybody. Listen, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me? Well, I'm leaving. I'm going to try to reach that four back there. Maybe I will, maybe not. I will know if I stay here. I will kill him. I'll kill him. Mr. Wyatt. I told you to stay in your wagon. That's exactly what I intend to do. I just thought you might like to know that Danone's taken one of your horses. She's run away. She's going to try to reach that fort back there. Well, are you just going to stand there? Sid. Yeah, Buck. Take over. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, little fool, stop fighting, will you? You could have drowned yourself trying to cross that river. I said stop fighting. I'll kill you, I'll kill you. You crazy, no good riding that horse to death. Well, did I, I knock any sense into you? Yes, thank you. I'll be all right now. I was on your trail for two hours. Where'd you think you were going? I didn't care. Oh. Well, let's get back. My horse will have to carry both of us. May not make it now till morning. What you did. Did what? You came after me. Your, your mouth, it's bleeding. Hit you harder than I thought. Why, for now? Well? Well? Get ready. For what? I'm crazy, yes, all right. I'll give you some craziness. I tell you some. I'm going to tell you that I love you. Yeah? From the first time I see your beautiful face in Chicago. My what? It's beautiful to me. It's a nice, rugged face. Beard and all. I love it. Did you like to hear that? Yeah. Well, I like to hear it too. All right. You've got a nice, rugged face. Beard and all. <laughs> Chérie, c'est très drôle. <laughs> you want me to tell you I love you, huh? Is it so difficult? Well, don't you think it's a little too quick for a man to... Oh, first time anything has been too quick for you, isn't it? Come back here. Yes, but... Like these? Like these. Much further to the camp. Well, as soon as we reach the top of this rise, we'll be able to see it. What's the matter? Been traveling too fast for you? Much too fast. I did not care if we ever reached it. We'll be there in half an hour. And when we are, just remember that you're. Well, I am. Um, what? Look. Down there. Oh, the wagon train. It, it's burning on fire. Book on the ground. Those, those are buddies. They came oh. back, Dan. On. The Indians came back. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind as many another American has. Recently, the Institute of International Education in Los Angeles, California, opened an office for its new affiliate, the Center for International Students and Visitors. When foreign visitors sponsored by public or private groups visit Los Angeles, the center provides them with help in seeing and learning the American way of doing things. It's been found that for the most part, visitors would rather see how Americans live rather than how they make money. Within a recent two months period, the center was host in one way or another to a Finnish publisher, a French director of police, a Malayan journalist, a United Nations delegate from India, a director of education from Iceland, 
a German lawyer, a Korean editor, and an Austrian composer. Visitors usually stay from two days to three weeks, and when they return to their own countries, they take with them a clear and honest picture of how Americans live, thanks to an organization which has dedicated itself to the spreading of world amity, an organization which has discovered that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Westwood the Woman, starring Robert Taylor as Buck and Denise Dossell as Denard. Don and Buck have reached the encampment of the wagon train. The tragic shambles of the Indian raid. The surviving women are silent, exhausted, stunned. Roy. Roy, I'm sorry. Stop saying you're sorry. But if I hadn't left camp... What difference? There was more than a hundred of them. I've been waiting for you, Buck. So listen careful. When you said you could get the women through without the men... I didn't believe it. But now I I know they can make it. Take him. Take him to the valley. Now, leave me be. Roy, I can't. The supplies, the wagons. How many are left? I said, how many are... He's dead, boss. He's dead. He said the women can make it, Ito. But not after this. He was wrong. Some horses, right? Some mules, wagons. Mr. Whitman, right? You women. Well, he's dead. Mr. Whitman is dead. The last thing he said was to take you through to the valley. I'm sorry, but I can't do it. You fought and you've died. Sickness, floods, accidents. Now this. There's just too much against you. We'll start back in the morning. No! No! I won't turn back. Not me. Not me. Not me. I won't turn back either. We've come too far. All right. If that's the way you want it, that's the way you'll get it. Nito, what about Cutler? Where's Cutler? Dead. He's here, Mr. Wyatt. He never left my side. <laughs> Rose, please. <laughs> Lori. Where's Lori? I can find Lori. She's under that wagon, oh. Demo. She didn't suffer none. She was one of the first. Oh, Lori. My poor Lori. Who else? Eighteen. We did what we could. I'll put the names in the journal. Oh, but not now. Please, not now. Six days since the Indian raid. You know how many miles we've gone? No, boss, no. But uh, I find something. Forty miles, maybe fifty at best. Nothing but rain, day and night. Sure, boss, sure. But I tell you, I find... You check the wagons, everything all right back there? Everything good, boss. Woman sleep, baby. It'll be a long, wet night. Yes, sir, boss. Boss, please, you listen. Jim Quackabush. I find grave, Jim Quackabush. Where? Where? Come, I show. In dark, I fall over something. I hold a lantern. It's a... Jim Quackabush. Dead of cholera? Oh, yes, sir, boss, yes. Get a shovel. Get two shovels and show me where. What? Shovel, boss? What a man. You couldn't have picked a better night for it. Uh, boss, I think I... Gig enough, huh? I go back to come. You stay right where you are, but take it easy. Don't jam that shovel, sir. Boss, why we be so careful? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Give me that lantern. Well, Ito, you see what I see? Oh, Rito, come on. There's a jug down there. There's two jugs down there. Rum. Rum? Whiskey, sake, only it's rum. Sign on grave, say cholera. Well, that's one sure way of keeping it safe. I buried these jugs five years ago. Oh, ha, <laughs> ha. Nanda, sake de sakida. What'd you say? <laughs> I say, good old quacky bush. <laughs> oh, gonna be very wet night, boss. Huh? Wet tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's something brand new out there, ladies. That's desert. And it's like walking through a furnace. I said walking because that's just what I mean. 
What mules and horses we got left, well, they, they just won't make it with a full load. So you're going to walk and you're going to strip the wagons. Junk everything you don't absolutely need. Everything. And guard the water barrels with your life. For the next week or so, they're going to be your life. All right, start unloading. You mean the furniture we brought? Our clothes, our nice dresses? I said everything, didn't I? But we come out here to be married. How are we going to look? How are we going to look when they see us? Oh, God, listen. This poor woman. What do you think they do at night when we camp? They open their trunks. This is the pretty things. They touch silk again. Silk. Oh, what do you think has kept them going? These poor women, huh? You buried Lori in a silk dress. Do you want to live or do you want... Oh, I don't care what you do. We'll be starting across in an hour. Come on, ladies. Let's dump the trunks. Rose, now, just don't you go trying to push any trunk around. I'll give you a hand. Just Doesn't as matter. As... Throw it all away. Just... Save what the baby might... Rose, you mean now? I, I think so. Just don't tell him. Please. Please. Oh, now, don't you worry, honey. We'll take care of you. What do you think you're doing? Get her out of that wagon. It's Rose. She's going to have a baby. Out here? Yes, out here. Because she knows you won't stop. Not even for a baby. When did I say I wouldn't... Oh, please, just leave us alone. Just let her hide in the wagon and then... Oh, go away. Go away, son of honor. What do you say? I say, who is the woman? Who is the woman? Get up to that lead wagon. We're going to stop. <laughs> Look at him. Like it was home sweet home. It is, boss. Listen. Well, ladies, can we start moving again? Move right ahead, Mr. White. It's a boy. It has been more than a week since I have made an entry in this journey. Yesterday, we reached the end of the desert. Thanks to Providence and Mr. Wyatt, we survived the crossing. Even my tiny baby boy. Mr. Wyatt says that if, if all goes well, we will be inside of Whitman's Valley in three days. We cannot believe it. We just cannot believe it. What the devil are you doing? Who said you could stop here? Get back in the wagons. Keep moving. Stretch those wagons out. Oh, leave us alone. Go to sleep or something. You all gone crazy? What do you think you're doing? We have agreed it's a good place to stop. It is shady. There is a stream. We can wash. We can mend clothes. We can but I do... told you you're here. Whitman's Valley is right over that hill. Or is somebody else having a baby? No baby. Well, then what? We are not going to the town. You're not what? Look at us. Our clothes are rags. We don't go in, in, looking like this, like tramps. You go to the town, and when you come back, bring your things that make us look like ladies. You heard her, Mr. Wyatt. Foo foo, feminine thing. We don't move from here until you do. And if the men come near us before we're ready, they never go back. And we mean what she says. Yeah, All right, ladies, if that's the way you want it. Spread your sails, ladies. There's a freshening breeze, and I smell men ahead. <laughs> now, if if you'll stop asking questions, I'll try to give you some of the answers. First of all, about Roy Whitman. He's dead. Indians. We left a lot of the women buried there, too. Well, what about the rest of them, Wyatt? The women are camped just over the hill. Oh, no, 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 you're not going. None of you are going anywhere. This is the way the women want it, and this is the way it's going to be. They won't come into town until they look their best. You get within range of them now, and they'll blow your heads off. <laughs> I got some idea of what most of you went through to get to this valley. But none of you came through the hell these women did. So just make sure you're good enough for them. Make sure you treat them right. Because God help you if you don't. 
Whitman's gone, but I'm still here. Well, these here must be some females. What do they want us to do? Well, they gave me my orders. I want a wagon, and I want it loaded with things they can wear, nice things. Until then, you stay here, and they stay there. Ah, you're going to have a time rounding up petticoats in Whitman's Valley. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you've got stuff for trading with the Indians, bolts of cloth, blankets, any kind of crazy trinkets that'll make a woman look like a woman. The sooner you get them, the sooner they'll be here. <laughs> Well, ladies, now that you've quit clawing each other and fighting over what I brought back, let me take a look at you. Well, Lito, what do you think? What did you say? I say, let's go, boss. You're sure a sorry lot of females, but... They ain't seen one of your kind for so long that even you'll look good. Stay here and talk if you want to. We're leaving for town. Just one more thing. They've been building a big pavilion in town all these months while they've been waiting for you. That's where you'll go. You got a big spread of grub and there'll be music and dancing. That's how you'll meet the men. From there on, ladies, it's up to them and it's up to you. Now start moving. Stretch out. <laughs> Likely as not, we're about as handsome as a school of mackerel. <laughs> but we done the best we could. <laughs> now, you can look us over, but don't think you're going to do the choosing. All the way from Independence, we had your picture in our minds. We could either shut our eyes and dream what you was going to look like, or we could open our eyes and look at the rump of a mule. <laughs> Well, ladies, I guess even this bunch is prettier than them mules. <laughs> so come on, gentlemen. We're choosing partners for the dance. Buck, where are you going? No place special. There's a preacher riding into town. I want to make sure he gets here safe. I go with you? Yeah, you go with me. A preacher out here? He has no made any marriages. Likely he'll be awful rusty, yeah. Maybe we let him practice on us? Yeah, I guess that's the least we can do for him. I, uh, I shaved. Oh, yes. So nice and smooth. It's a beautiful face and I love it. Oh, chérie. Uh, just between you and me. Yes? We better get that preacher and fast. In a moment, our stars will return. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Like Ralph Bunch. In 1947, he was sent to the Holy Land to settle the touchy Palestine issue. Throughout the negotiations, Mr. Bunch remained calm and in full control of the situation, as an ambassador of goodwill should. At 10 in the morning, he would begin his first conference. At 1 a.m. the following morning, he would stop for an hour of relaxation. Then, with a new inspiration, he'd go back to work. He exhausted everyone but himself, but he stuck to the job before him, and believe me, it was a job. The climax came when the Egyptians and Israeli hit a stalemate over the lines separating the east-west fronts. Each refused any line drawn on a map because it would be a visible evidence of defeat. After a steady 20-hour debate, first with the Egyptian delegation, then the Israel, Mr. Bunch tactfully suggested that they draw no line on any map, but instead run the division along a certain road. Both delegations quickly accepted his suggestion. This was just one of many difficult situations Mr. Bunch smoothed out by skillful indirection. When the agreement was finally signed between the two countries, Ralph Bunch had won a two-way fight. He added two more members to the family of the United Nations and won worldwide admiration for his race. Like others, he learned that by helping others, you help your country. Now here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are coming forward for a curtain call. Robert Taylor and Denise Tarsell. Bob 
Well, you were excellent as an early pioneer, and I now understand you play a modern one in your latest MGM picture. Yes, Irving, it's Above and Beyond, and co-stars Eleanor Parker. I play the famous flyer, Colonel Paul Tibbetts. That stands for service above and beyond the call of duty? Right, Denise, for which the United States awards its highest honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Oh, it must have been a thrill for you, Bob, to play the part, hmm? Seeing as you were also a Navy flyer during the war, weren't you? Well, you can't compare the two careers, Denise. Colonel Tibbetts was selected from thousands of Air Force experts to assemble and train the secret group destined to drop the first atomic bomb in history oh. at Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. Meeting him was one of the highlights of my life. And where is he now? On another top secret mission, probably. His entire life is devoted to service to his country. He's truly a man of which every American can be proud. I'm proud of him, too. Good, Denise. We want you to become an, as Americanized as possible. Oh, I am, Evan. Now I want to tell you about our play for next week. It's the compelling story, A Phone Call from a Stranger. And starring in their original roles will be that excellent actor, Gary Merrill and the glamorous Shelley Winters. You're off to a great start, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night. Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.